This video was created by Gwilherm Kaher from Imperial College London and should not be distributed outside of Imperial College. It is aimed at research students or staff from Imperial College who have never fitted a core level spectrum before. In this video we will use the Avantage software from Thermo. This is a spectrum of a standard carbon 1s core level which arises from contamination on the surface of your sample. In XPS, the carbon 1s core level is always measured in order to correct any shift that may have occurred due to local sample charging. I have placed a knowledge view on the side to help identifying the different species. To start we are going to select a range. This icon is located as shown. Allow for 3 EV of background on each side of the spectrum. Say around 281 EV for the low energy side and around 291 EV for the high energy side. Next, click on the icon called Peak Fitting which is located in the Analysis tab as shown here. Place the Peak Fitting window on the side so that it does not obstruct with the fitting view. Select the Peak Fit Table tab to see the properties for each peak. The background type that we will select for our peak fitting is the smart background. It will fit a Shirley background if the background is higher at the high binding energy side and it will fit a linear background if the background is higher at the low binding energy side. In most cases, the smart background is the most preferred option. Now, before doing any peak fitting, I strongly advise you to learn about spin orbit splitting and particularly about the S, P, D, and F subshells. Learn about the reason these subshells are split into doublets. In the case of the carbon ones, the 1s feature is made of only a single component. So going back to our fitting using single peak component. Add the number of peaks that you can visually observe. In this particular case, two peaks are clearly observable. Add one peak around 284.5 EV and another peak around 288.5 EV. The width for a standard carbon 1s peak is around 1.1 to 1.4 EV on this instrument. The Lorentzian to Gaussian ratio or LG ratio is expected to be 20% for that kind of width. For a width below 1 EV this LG ratio can increase to a value between 30% and 60%. The narrower the peaks, the higher is the LG ratio. In the case of carbon 1s, only the sp2 carbon type will be below 1 eV. The sp2 carbon is not present in this example. Next, click onto the Fit Peaks tab. Here the fitting method must be using the convolve fitting model as the peak shape is a convolution of Lorentzian and Gaussian. A peak fitting model that would use the product fitting model instead of the convolve model would not be fitting as well. But if used, the LG ratio should be adjusted to 30%. Here we will use the convolve fitting method for the rest of the example. Now before fitting our data, we need to change the range at which the width or FWHM and the LG ratio is allowed to vary. The rule of thumb is that all peaks have usually the same or similar width and LG ratio. To do this click on the constraint cells and constrain the width and the LG ratio of peak B to the ones of peak A. This is done by writing A times 1 in the cells shown. Then fit your peaks by clicking on the fit this level button. Check the width and LG ratio values. The width here is bit high above 1.3 EV and the LG ratio is above 30%. Also the model does not fit well with the data at binding energy around 286.5 EV. This is an indication that there must be another peak around the 286 EV region. Add another peak by clicking onto the Add Fitted Peak tab and click on Add Single Peak. Make sure this new peak is located around 286 EV. Also make sure that you have constrained the width and LG ratio of this new peak to the ones of peak A. Then click on to fit this level. The result is better. The width of the peaks is close to 1.3 EV and ALG ratio also close to 20% but not quite. For most cases, the C single bond C should be around 284.8 EV and the C single bond O should be close to 286 EV. 
you will also often get AOC double bond O around 288.5 EV. If this is not the case or if it does not fit well, then this is an indication that there may be another peak. In this example, the C single bond O is not close to 286 EV and as you can see it does not fit very well around 287 EV. Let's add a fourth peak. Go back to the Add Fitted Peak tab and add another peak around 287 EV. Constraint it to peak A, the same way as we did for peak B and for peak C. Now click on Fit This Level button. The peak fitting model fits now well with our data. The width is 1.3 EV and the LG ratio is closer to 20%. Let's label the four peaks. As per the knowledge view, the peak close to 284.8 EV is labeled as the CC bond. Write C minus C bond next the C1S of peak A. The peak close to 288.5 is attributed to carbonate bond or OC double bond O peak and can be labeled as such next to the C1S of peak B. The peak close to 286 EV is labeled as the C single bond O peak. Write C minus O bond next the C1S of peak C. The peak close to 287.9 EV is labeled as the C double bond O peak. Write C equal O bond next the C1S of peak D. That is it you have now fitted carbon 1S. If you like this course, then please subscribe. Ha 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 ha, I was joking of course.